We usually stick pretty close to home on Living St. Louis. We take the occasional road trip and have actually done a couple of stories in Europe. Rarely, though, do we feel the need to wander off into outer space. And yet, up there on the International Space Station, it turns out there is a local story. Ruthie Zell tonight on The Astronaut Who Phoned Home. After you get done with your question, you're going to go to the end of the line. The big moment has almost arrived for these third graders at Ellis School in Belleville. Thanks to their teacher, the boys and girls are about to have a very long-distance conversation with astronaut and Belleville native Sandra Magnus. She's on a three-month mission aboard the International Space Station. For more than a dozen years, Magnus has been a pen pal of Ellis third grade teacher Jennifer May. You can start this now. You need to. May arranged the 10-minute question and answer session through NASA so her students could learn about living and working in space from someone who knows. She also wanted to share her own enthusiasm about space, which dates back to when she was a student. It was in college that I had to build a robot, and I did a horrible job of building this robot, and I needed help to desolder things. So the person who I went to was a um, school teacher, and he showed me how to actually build a robot and be able to have it move, and he got me interested in going to space camp. NA1SS, NA1SS, K9, GXU. The technical demands of this project were met by volunteers, members of amateur radio clubs in St. Clair County and across the bi-state area. They put in some 300 man hours gathering, installing, and testing the equipment for the space station chat. We had four different sets of electronics just to get the antenna on the roof to point in the right direction and to track and follow the space station. And by doing that, we were able to have a solid, clear signal the entire time. In addition to the antenna on the school's roof, a second antenna was brought in as a backup. It's part of a mobile communication system on loan from St. Clair County's Emergency Management Office. The facility itself is used as an interoperable communication system in case public safety commu communications for police, fire, EMS are out of service. They can call and send us out to the stricken area and we can restore communications until uh, permanent replacements can be put in place. NA1SS, NA1SS, K9, GXU, over. K9, GXU, this is NA1SS, how do you copy? We've got you perfect, first student. My name is Kearney. How do you get power on the ISS since you cannot plug something into an outlet with an extension cord? Over. And Kenny, that's a good question. Um, we have to bring everything with us and, and use everything we can up here on the ISS, and we use the sun to get our power. We have very large solar arrays, and if you go look at a picture of the, of the ISS, you'll see the solar arrays. They're the big orange panels. And so we take heat from the sun, and we can turn it into electricity, and that's where we get our electricity from. Over. My name is Ryan. How do you move the robotic arm? Over. Well, Ryan, we have a robotics workstation and there's hand controllers there that let me move the robot arm and I have computers that show me pictures of where the arm is so I can see what I'm doing. Over. My name is Haley. Is there a limit of how many days a person can live on the ISS and stay in space? Over. Haley, we typically stay here for six months, although there have been people from Russia who have lived in space for over a year, so you can live here for a long time. Over. These types of amateur radio contacts started a quarter century ago. Since then, NASA has coordinated some 400 conversations between astronauts and students from around the world. It's another uh, thing for the kids to see that there, there's many possibilities in life. You can be whatever you want to be. You've talked to someone who's that. You've asked them personal questions. You have really touched upon uh, the core of what it means to, to do when you grow up, to do a job, to be part of something, be part of a community. And so from that aspect for kids, uh, it's exceedingly important. And that's all part of planning for the future for kids. Since you've had this relationship with Sandy, has it made you think about what you want to do when you grow up? Mm -hmm. And what would that be right now? Well, being an astronaut is really fun because you get to float in space and there's no gravity, so I think it would be really cool to do that. Do you hope to meet Sandy someday? Yes. If she comes to your class, what do you think you'll ask her? Um, I'd ask her if it was exciting being up in space. 
Knowing your math and science is a must for aspiring astronauts, so it's no surprise Jennifer May's classroom is math and science central for third graders. By conversing with someone at work in the final frontier, they may start to see how their school work applies to the outside world and beyond. Students at this age sometimes say, well, why do I need to know math? Why do I need to know English? And as we give them these opportunities to see these things, then they can go, oh, now I understand. How many had fun this morning? Everything involves around math and science and, you know, measuring things. That's math. Getting change from the store. That involves math. Science, anything that you do, centimeters, decimeters, everything.